Hello, good afternoon, and today is Tuesday the 9th of March, and today I want to talk about energy. Now, we talked about this briefly yesterday. Uh, the stream got quite a long, and I sort of skipped over a few things, and a few of you went, actually, that's quite interesting. Let's give us some more of that. So today I want to go into a little bit more depth about it. So let's bring up the, uh, the conversation we had yesterday. This is uh, Van der Poel's data from yesterday, and you can kind of see how his kilojoules and his calories are actually very, very similar, 5,417 versus 5,959. Now, if you know anything about kilojoules and calories, you'll know that um, a, cal a calorie is 4.18 of a kilojoule. So it should be a lot, lot different to that. And if you've ever used your Garmin and had the two displays up at the same time, you'll see that they actually give a very like-for-like -like figure. And this can get kind of confusing, especially when you start using other apps as well, if you're using Zwift and Strava and Garmin, you'll find that these two figures go way out of kilter. So I'm going to try and demystify some of that today. Now, a little bit of history on all of this. This all started, this idea of counting calories, when we realised that we could actually uh, reduce our weight and control our, um, our fueling by understanding our calorie demand and by taking on some sort of a calorie deficit we would then lose weight now this all started with something called met metabolic equivalency tables and when we started using heart rate monitors and things like that there's a paper up here and i'll probably put a link to it somewhere where essentially uh, researchers went through and found out that for almost every task and on there there's some examples of like gardening for instance and like high intensity gardening and digging and things like that and how that would compare to something like cycling and gave everything a metabolic equivalency now the problem with this was soon realized because they were based on like 70 kilo man 65 kilo woman and then you sort of scale up and you'd go well, what's the intensity of the exercise well we'll look at the heart rate that was put in and whether that was anyway you get the idea um very very quickly it became to the point where most of us realized that this didn't make an awful lot of sense and it wasn't really worth paying too much attention to however then came along power meters and now power meters are so affordable and so accurate that loads of you probably watching this have got a smart trainer at least if not power meter attached to your bike um and we know that those power meters are now between five and one percent accurate now with that in mind, we know that we can calculate kilojoules very accurately because a kilojoule is one watt for one second. That's science, that's it, you know, it's done. And we know a calorie um, is basically defined by raising the temperature of water one degree in, in a given space. So these are two sort of scientific measurements that we can then actually directly uh, translate to each other. There's no ambiguity in that. So why are we getting these weird figures? Now, um, it's a lot of it to do with um, trying to apply the gross metabolic efficiency of a human. So we are not 100% efficient. So the fuel that we eat does not directly go into the, uh, the, the power on a bike. We've still got to move our heart, we've still got to move our lungs, still got to think, still got to sweat, all those sort of things. And all that gets expelled as heat. Now, estimates range between about 18 and 26% of our actual energy actually goes into producing power to do work and that's where we're seeing these brands try and do it and make those conversions so um, just remember a calorie is a measure of the potential energy stored in food which is why we see it on food packaging food packaging and a kilojoule is a measure of the actual work done so it's right that we need to consider both because both are actually measuring different things although we can actually draw some information out of both of those as to how to fuel our rides and how to think about the calorie intake so that we can manage our weight on a part of a calorie a management or calorie deficit depending on what we're trying to achieve. Now, to just illustrate the point, I've just gone through and I've just pulled a ride from Zwift that one of our members had done at some point um, and uploaded it to all the various different platforms and just gave you, just to illustrate what's actually going on here. So. I'll put it in a nice little table for you so you can see. So the top line of this table shows the kilojoule value. Now that's come from the power meter. You know, and there's a little bit of discrepancy, one kilojoule here and there, depending on whether they've applied wattage smoothing or not. Um, that's not really that important. And then I've taken the calories that, that each one of those has reported. Now you'll see that Zwift is reporting significantly less calories 
than excerpt. Now on that end column there, what I've actually done is I've actually just taken the normalized power, applied that equation we talked about earlier, 4.186, and um, just come up with a calorie conversion like that, just you know, just to see where, where it all end up. Now, after that, what I've done is taken that calorie report, converted it into kilojoules by um, dividing it by 4.186, and then looking at the percentages of metabolic efficiency that these various platforms are, uh, are given out. And you'll see there that Zwift is being uh, super generous. They are saying that about 26% efficient. Now that is a very, very fit person. Um, whereas Exa on the other side is giving us about 21. Now, other things in there, Garmin give us about 24, 25, Strava 23, They're all using their own sort of averages if you like. Um, stages, I quite like using the stages equivalent, so they just use 22 because it's halfway between 18 and 26, which is what the estimates are for gross metabolic efficiency. It's quite hard to measure without some really scientific um, stuff and also can depend a lot on time of day, definitely on hormones, um, genetics, all sorts of things that really, really affect that. So measuring it and being accurate with it is quite difficult, but we can roughly, with a bit of experience, work out where we lay on that scale. Now, there's two ways of looking at this. You could say that, hey, um, Zwift isn't really helping me here, you know, because essentially what Zwift is saying in this one is it's for 592 um, calories, you actually manage to produce more work, do more work for those calories, where Exa on the other side is saying that you had to consume more calories to produce that same amount of work. Now, it depends on which way you're looking at this really, because the pros of how Zwift are doing it, for instance, could be going, well, if I'm trying to follow a calorie deficit, it's better that it thinks I'm more efficient than I am, therefore I haven't burned as many calories as I think I have, therefore I'm less likely to eat too much. The con of that is if you're relying on that for fueling something like a Zwift race, it's probably going to get under report what it is that you want to eat. On the other side of that, Zwift's probably going to give you more, um, for Exa, it's probably going to give you more feedback on how you should fuel a ride. Um, 21, 22% seems a lot more reasonable on how, if you're using those figures on how you should fuel. Um, the con of that is that if you're trying to use it as a calorie deficit, is that you can probably come into the belief that you've actually burn more calories than you actually have. Now it's quite important really because this is just an hour long ride and the difference there between the 500 and something and the 700 is actually quite a lot. I mean these energy gels here, these are um, 60, 60 calories each so that's three energy gels difference you know and that's in an hour's worth of consumption that's a lot or you know this this bar is uh, 1155 you know, so that's half an energy bar an hour difference in estimations on um, energy requirement in that one ride alone. So it's definitely something to be aware of. And if I was to give you any sort of advice, I would really work on the kilojoules and know that the work done. And remember that you're still going to eat normally. You've still got that basal metabolic rate. So this is all about work done over and above what you would be doing normally. So it makes sense to work on the kilojoules that are actually expended in the activity that you're doing and replacing that with your fuel rather than trying to do this complicated calorie conversion. But not all fuel, not all foods have uh, kilojoules written on them. So being aware of this conversion, I think is really important. Well, I hope that's kind of <laughs> cleared up a little bit. And again, I'm always up for taking your questions. Um, for the last part of the stream, I just want to jump into excerpt and do our normal um, talk through our training. So. Uh, this is into the planner. I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping. There is yoga. I have done yoga on Monday. And we also did yoga on Tuesday. It doesn't very add very much to my overall XSS. What it is doing for me is it's habit forming. And mobility is really the foundation of your fitness. And I really need to improve my mobility before I can really think about improving anything else. So that is important to me right now. Next thing is, if you haven't done it already, the session is up for this evening. It's a relatively easy session tonight. You'll find it here under here uh, under sessions. Just need to click that big button that says join. Um, if you're joining us from the internet, remember you also need to go to our website and book um, a session so you get the Zoom link emailed to you so you can join our class. 
Um, yeah, and tonight it's mostly all at lower threshold powers. It's going to be quite an easy one. There's only sort of six high intensity sessions. So if you're still carrying a bit of residual fatigue over from the weekend, you could always just turn it down into that to make sure you're still hitting those exert targets. Now, let me show you what I mean by that. Coming into here, looking at training, for instance, you can kind of see I've got two red stars showing that I've got a bit of a surplus still. So it's just going to be recommending loads and loads of endurance rides, which is absolutely right. And if you look at tonight's class, it's got um, a little bit more demand than what this is saying. So my interval targets are only 116. So I still want to ride with you guys. It's great fun and I will be there and I'm looking forward to riding with you. But with that fatigue in mind, I'm just going to turn it down just in the intervals. So when I get to the intervals, I'll just be clicking the little the phone buttons on the minus, knocking it down probably 10, 15% just to take me into the zone below. So I'm not building up too much fatigue because the one thing I really want to sort out is my big spiky line from the weekend. I want to get that smoothed out and get this line on a much smoother trajectory and get rid of this big valley of fatigue, which is not good. Remember, my sky high. And if that means a very, very gradual increase in my fitness, then I'm all okay with that. Okay, that's all from me. I will see you guys on the Turbo Trainers this evening. Liz is in for our strength um, workout and, of course, yoga first thing tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. I am really hoping I'll see you all there. Nice one. Thanks for listening. See you soon.